So you live in the tropics where it's mostly wet and warm and you're thinking, I want to make sourdough bread, but you just keep failing. Is it me or is it the weather? What is it? In this video, I show you how to make sourdough bread from start to finish and you'll never need to fear failing again, I promise. Hey, thanks for stopping by and if it's your first time here, my name is Lynette and I make health, beauty and lifestyle videos to help you be beautiful and healthy naturally. And just in case you're wondering, I'm always trying out recipes, makeup and other lifestyle tips and tricks just to make sure they actually work. So hopefully that'll save you some time, money and heartache as well. So if there's something you'd like me to test out, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. In the meanwhile, I started making sourdough bread a little over a year ago now and I was always failing. Like I'll be diligently following a well-known tried and tested recipe, dutifully doing whatever it says to do but in the end I would still fail and I recall feeling so disappointed, so discouraged and flat out defeated. I even remember thinking to myself, maybe I'm just not cut out to be a baker but you know what? That's a lie. And if you've been telling yourself that, stop. You can be as good a home baker as anyone else. The trick is really to keep the dough cool instead of keeping it warm like you see in a lot of other videos. Especially if you live in the tropics where you have a persistently warm climate where you know it's just hot and humid all year round. I was just describing Singapore by the way. In case you haven't noticed, it's summer 365 days a year. And if you don't get the dough temperature right, you pretty much can't get anything else right. So the first thing you got to remember is this, you have to start with cold ingredients like straight from the fridge if you can. Even your flour must be cold if possible. Another way to ensure you achieve that is to get an infrared food or cooking thermometer. I'll put the link to the one I'm using down in the description box below so do check it out when you can. It's so much easier with a thermometer. Then you can tell and monitor the dough temperature and make sure that it never exceeds 25 degrees Celsius. With that in mind, let's jump right in. We're starting with 240 grams of bread flour. 60 grams of whole wheat flour and 210 grams of ice cold water. Mix them all up in your stand mixer for 3 minutes at low speed. Then cover and leave it in your fridge for 1 hour. After 1 hour, add 60 grams of liquid sourdough or vigorous sourdough starter. Mix it in at low speed for a further 3 minutes. Cover then leave it in your fridge for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, add 6 grams of pink salt to the dough and this time mix it in at medium speed for 5 minutes or until it comes together in a ball. But just in case you don't see that happening, no worries. It's actually more important to check on the dough temperature to make sure it doesn't go over 25 degrees Celsius. And if it does, don't panic. Just stop the mixer, remove the dough hook, put it in there, cover and pop the whole thing in the fridge for 15 minutes or so to cool it down. But for now, let's just say that the dough temperature is optimal and so we'll be setting the timer for 15 minutes after which we'll be doing 3 sets of stretch and folds to strengthen the dough. So after 15 minutes, wet your hands, stretch and fold it like so. And set your timer for a further 15 minutes. After the alarm goes off, stretch and fold it with a wet hand a second time like so and set your timer for yet another 15 minutes. When you hear the alarm, stretch and fold it a third time like so. Notice how with each stretch and fold, the dough gains strength and becomes smoother. Then what you want to do is transfer your dough to an oiled container so that it has room to grow. I've used extra virgin olive oil to oil this glass container by the way and let the dough rest for 30 minutes this time. After 30 minutes, wet your hands again and coil fold it like so and set the timer for a further half hour. Remember we did 3 sets of stretch and folds, so now we're also gonna do 3 sets of coil folds just to strengthen the dough further so that it can hold all the gases and rise up nice and high. Coil fold it again with wet hands and set the timer for the final half hour. 
After 30 minutes, always remember to wet your hands first and coil fold it for a third and final time and then let it rest for one whole hour. When the timer goes off after an hour, lightly flour your work surface with a mix of all-purpose flour and whole wheat flour and pre-shape the dough like so. Why pre-shape? Because pre-shaping is like suggesting to the dough the final shape you want it to be. After pre-shaping the dough, let it rest for a final half hour before you do the final shaping. Depending on whether you're making a betach or a boule, the final shaping is slightly different. Here I'll be showing you how to shape a betach. Remember to have your Benetton at the ready. I usually put a disposable hairnet on it and then I sprinkle some semolina or rice flour so that the dough wouldn't end up getting stuck to the Benetton. I'll also add some flour to the top of the loaf just to make sure it's not sticky in any way. Remember the seam side is always up when you cradle it into your Benetton. Don't worry, it'll all make sense in just a little bit. Meanwhile, cover it with another disposable hairnet and then a tea towel goes on top of that to absorb all the condensation and then put it in a big enough Ziploc bag and pop it in the fridge. Leave it overnight for it to develop flavour. Come next morning, oil your Dutch oven. I usually oil it with flaxseed oil because it's the best for cast iron. And then I place it on the middle rack and preheat the oven at 250 degrees Celsius for about half an hour or so. And as always, it's best to check the internal temperature of your oven because not all ovens are created equal, right? And once the oven is hot enough, take the dough out from the fridge, lightly flour it before transferring onto the oval bread sling, lightly flour the top as well and score it like so. Here I'm making a simple wheat pattern, taking care not to slash too deep. Once you're done, remove the Dutch oven from the preheated oven. Be careful, it's very, very hot. And place the betach into the Dutch oven. Lightly spritz the top with some distilled water to further improve its oven spring. And then cover and bake on the middle rack for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, remove the lid and continue baking for another 20 minutes, this time at 230 degrees Celsius or until the desired browning is achieved. Like I mentioned in earlier videos, it's best to slice the sourdough at least after 5 hours or the next day. And this is how it looks like on the inside. Eat it with curry, sardines, with diced tomatoes and herbs. It's really up to your imagination. And that's how to make sourdough bread from start to finish. And this method is especially great for persistently warm climates or tropics. I hope you learned something useful today and if you did, hit that like button and share it with your friends, especially those who are still struggling to make a good old loaf of sourdough bread. It's easy once you get the hang of it, I promise. And you're most welcome to follow along, revisit or save this video anytime you like and do check out the links and show notes below when you can. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.